content. Koala. This one's kind of boring, actually. This one's alright. This is very Mad Max, I felt. But, you know, that's probably what they were going for. Very, they even said post-apocalyptic and stuff in the thing. Um, and you should see the skin for Crash. It's very Mad Max. Oh, just, you know, it's really just so I can finish my dumb anecdotes. Um, yeah, my horrific, uncomfortable life. Uh, let's just have a little, uh, you yeah, know, that's, that's a different shade of green. It's space, and in space everything's green. Well known. Oh no, what, what am I doing? No, this is fine. I meant to change characters. You notice there's more characters and customization options, really, than there is, um, um, other stuff. Anyway, what was I saying about this chick? Yeah, so we both get cats at the same time. She gets, like, quite an expensive breed, and I just get this cat, and they're literally giving him away cheap, because he's, um, was the weakest of the litter, refused to eat ended up getting a very bad illness from birth from his mum, like herpes or something. And I had to give him like drugs basically from the moment he, I, he was in my care. Um, he's been vaccinated, he's been healthy ever since. He's like got a snub nose, he's a snub nose breed. They call him Garfield Cat because he's like a short hair mix that looks kind of like Garfield with a squash face. Um, he's, he has a little bit of a breathing problem. But it's not too bad. I just have to keep his face washed because his eyes and his nose are too close together and it can cause like problems with the mucus and stuff. It's not very nice. But anyway, I look after him. I give him lots of food and stuff to make sure he's okay because they eat a lot because he grows big. His dad was massive. She buys this like rare breed cat with blue eyes, right? And it was a lot of money and she gets all the things for it and she cares for it like crazy. And it just suddenly dies. Like, they take it to the vet because there's something wrong, and it, they just go, yeah, it's gonna die. Like, its organs are failing, and all of them, basically, <laughs> or something like this. And she was so upset, and I was just like, oh, geez, you know? And, like, it was, like, kind of awkward, uh, but, like, you know, I didn't know, like, how to com comfort her because the cat meant a lot to her, and, like, I still have my cat, and we still talk to this day occasionally, me and this girl. And uh, she just always talk. She comes to talk to me sometimes on my uh, on the messaging apps and stuff. And like, because we don't live in the same town anymore, and she's just like, it's really sad. She just comes out and says to me, "Oh yeah, like, how's your cat doing? Uh, like, what's he look like? And you know, can I see a photo of him?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, you can come see him and stuff, you know." And like, I, you know. I'm always like saying to her, yeah, you can come and hang out, it's fine. And she's like, yeah, yeah, like I could do if I'm ever around that area. And she she never comes around. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, it's kind of awkward because like I was only casually interested in having a cat. And like she really loved the idea of having one. And like in the end, I ended up with my cat and like I'm really happy with him. He's a great, he's a great little thing. He's got such a personality and he's very intelligent. Like, he understands, like, quite a lot, considering he's only just about turn one now. He's got, you know, he's a great little thing. I think I talked about him before, though, in another playthrough. Yeah. No win quote. That's weird. Papu Papu's interesting. He's, um... The, if you didn't know, the original Crash Bandicoot Islands are based off of, like, some Polynesian tropical island kind of areas that are, like, you know, in near Australia. That's why it's all, like, marsupials and stuff. And it's, like, got kind of like a, um... Like... They say the main problem with Neocortex is that he was, like... Vivis it's kind of like the vivisection and like uh, the pollution thing and they said the biggest problem was that really in the first few games and then they kind of
kind of just drop that because it's kind of like aimed at kids and stuff. So they kind of just drop the, oh, hey, kids, maybe tell your parents to stop fucking burning carbon. <laughs> like, you know, and like, um, yeah, it, it was in the 90s. Um, and yeah, Papu Papu and his people are just supposed to literally be Polynesian people. And I've always wondered if the Polynesian people are actually like chill with their representation in this game. Because back in those days, it, was, it wasn't it was like they were asked permission, <laughs> let's just say. So they weren't even referenced, they were just like, look, here's a humanoid character. The only humanoid character in the series, too, you got to think about that. The only humanoid characters, really, in the series at this point in the early era. Everything else is like a humanoid-esque kind of, like, animal. And the... The mad scientists don't look like humans either. They're little yellow things, a little squat, big-headed yellow things with ends on their head and stuff. And they don't look real, aside from maybe embryo and the lab assistants, which all look the same. And may have been clones or robots. I don't know. So we're going to try this one again. I know I just played Koala Carnival, but I'm on a roll now. <laughs> I'm rambling. I always ramble when I play this game and I talk about dank shit. I just always found Papu Papu interesting. Because, uh, yeah, is he. Where is he supposed to come from? And it never hit me until I played them back when I was in New Zealand, actually. And I was like, oh, these guys look Maori. These guys look Maori, like, kind of like. But I doubt it's like a way the Maori want to be represented. <laughs> like, you know. Because, you know, the 90s. <laughs> like, so I, I was always wondering, are they, uh, is it okay that he's back? It, or like, like, the fact that his whole thing is, ha ha, I like to eat food. Look, he's literally doing the action. And it's like, um, was anyone asked? Or is it just so vague that it's like, well, who do you want us to ask? Because this could be literally anybody. We made them up. Maybe I'm just being way too sensitive over something, but like, I always just, it always was a standout. Let's just say, like, look at all of these characters. Even the humans don't look human. He does not look human. He does not look human. Look, this is not a human. If you see someone like this run, this guy looks like his proportions are somewhat human. He looks way more human than he. He looks like the odd one out. Like, Spyro looks like he fits more in universe. Like, like, Embryo. The only other humanoid-esque character. And he's a massive head. Tiny neck, tiny body. He's the only guy who's somewhat proportioned in a way that you could go, yeah, that looks like a human. I don't go through it all now. I mean, Mega Mix doesn't count. Emperor Velo's an alien. You know, like... Look at this. You've basically got like a... This franchise is basically 400 furries, some fucking weirdos, a couple of weird mad scientists who are apparently really into making furries, some aliens, this thing. It's like, it's like Sonic the Hedgehog. Is there, this is a universe where apparently everyone's chill with talking to a, like, humanoid, large, mad kangaroo that's blue. And some animals can fucking talk, and some can't. Who got to choose? I mean, Cortex was experimenting on people, right? But how come Polar and Pura and Penta can't speak? Ripper is just mad, so the assumption and like literally poor, poor example of mental health <laughs> representation in a game. But you know, back in those days, that was aha. It's funny. He's crazy, and like honestly, I still love this character. But you're like, who shows which characters could talk? Like all of them are intelligent. All of these can speak, and then at some point they went. We gotta have a Yoshi. We gotta have a few Yoshis that the characters ride on. But isn't it a little bit fucked up that these guys are animals? I mean, humans are animals too, so where I'm going with this, I don't know. But like, these guys are like animals that wear pants. Basically, what humans do. 
but like um they're riding on other animals that are to a degree sentient enough to drive a car and they're like yeah i can just sit on the back of this polar bear that's like smaller than me or this tiger if you're coco and like you know it just starts to make you like where is the line? Am I a bad person for ever riding a horse? <laughs> like, you know, oh god, is like me having a pet cat like some sort of subordinative slavery? Oh god, I've gone too deep. Maybe I should go vegan. Ugh. <laughs> also, yeah, if these guys are all animals, do they just all eat fruit? To avoid the awkward thing of like, this guy Probably in, like, let's face it, this is a Komodo dragon. I reckon he would eat half of this cast if this was, like, big. Like, if you just made, like, like real-life Pokemon, if you just made real-life Crash Bandicoot, and you just put a Bandicoot in pants, and then you put Komodo Joe in a little Genghis Khan outfit, or whatever he has going on here. Sultan outfit. He has a Genghis Khan outfit, that's why I said that. Look, he literally has a Genghis Khan outfit. Um... He would just fucking eat him. Like, you put a tiger with shoulder pads on, you've got more balls than I do, and he's got fucking sneakers as well on me. You don't see that here. And, like, he would just murder this. And probably, like, a few of the humans, too. And you're just like, a mad kangaroo. Don't mess with a mad kangaroo. Those guys are nuts anyway. Um, kangaroos can murder people. They disembowel people. <laughs> they probably don't disembowel people. <laughs> But you know what I mean? You're just kind of like, oh god, so what do these guys eat? It's like the same thing you say about, like, Pokemon. Like, do they eat Pokemon? Because they're animals, man. What's Tiny Tiger eating to gain that physique? Is he eating Cocos? Is he eating smaller Tigers? Because I don't want to see that. When you pick apart this universe of cuddly creatures designed at children, you're like, oh god, this is horrible. Like, he, even if you think about, like, saying, like, how relationships would work. He is, like, a quarter of the height of every woman in the in the universe. The only person roughly their height is Crunch. Does that mean Crash, Coco, and Fate Crash are children? Because they keep saying, like I've said before. Uh, I, I, let's just play the game. We can play Tiny or we can play Crash. Let's just play Crash for some standard lols. And you can see he has some great outfits. He's got his aviator outfit. He's got a scuba outfit. He's got his biker outfit. I really like this. It's so cool. <laughs> He's got some stuff I don't really... Reindeer, like, you know. This is his Mad Max kind of ass outfit, and it's kind of badass. Um, we're just going to play standard Crash, though. So, um, yeah, like I'm saying, man, it's just like... They, it's a real gray area on what the age of Crash is and whether, like I said before in one of the early episodes, whether or not he's literate, whether or not he understands what's going on around him. Because they say at the beginning he's like a mess up and like that's why he rebelled against Neocortex and also he may be dumb because of it. Like unable to speak but also not very clever. And like, um, but then they show him chasing down Torna in the first game. And then they show him in comic books and stuff, like, fantasizing over women. And then you see Crunch. And you think Crunch is an adult. All of the women are adults. What does that make Crash? Like a dwarf? Or does that make Crash, like, a teen? If he's a teen, how old is Coco? Because they said it was his little sister. Does that mean she's, like, ten? How old is Crash? It's probably like there's probably someone out there who's made up like a wiki and it's either real or it's hilariously untrue, like he's been convicted of war crimes. You know, like the Ice Age baby memes and all of that stuff where it's like, haha, it's hilarious. They're all saying he's like you know a murderer and stuff. Oh. Well that backfired horribly. <laughs> You know, I don't, like, when you're playing a kart racer, I hate playing the protagonist of the games because you're finally given an option to play anybody but the protag. It's like, who plays Mario in Mario Kart, you know? And, like, actually that did transfer over to my attitude towards playing fighting games. Where I'm like, 
hey, I don't have to play the Wii U. And then I have I have friends, and they're like, nah, legit, man, I love playing Wii U. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to take the piss out of that. But they in every game, they will play the Wii U character that they can find. So, like, and it's what they perceive as the Wii U character. So who would you think is the Wii U for Mortal Kombat? Now, it really depends on what you consider, like, you know, Ryu, like, is it the, the poster boy? Because that's Scorpion. My friend just plays Liu Kang, and you think Liu Kang is, like, the real Ryu of that franchise, right? You know, because he is, like, I am the martial arts man, and I'm a main part of the plot, and I'm, like, the very neutral, just goody, good, good boy, good boy, never does anything wrong until he's fucking dead, <laughs> like, you know, and then it's just like, oh, it's like, Liu Kang is the one with the true heart, and he's not Kung Lao, Kung Lao is the Ken of that universe, I assume, then, by that logic, and my mate, well, I've mentioned him a few times, I so I just, just call him Rob now, Rob is, like, the, the Ryu main, and he's always like, yeah, I just play the the main character, and it's like, no, you know, I, it's weird, isn't it? Because you see people playing him, but, like, I've never actually had any friends who played Ryu. Like, they, there's a lot of Ken players, and evil Ryu players for a while. What the Ryu players? Um, and, like, my mentality has always been, I'm going to play this crazy weirdo character that does some weird thing and is different and strange, because that's so me. <laughs> and, like, yeah, it's like, what? who was he playing in Tekken? In Tekken, he was trying to play Jin for ages, and then he got bored, and then he played... Oh, who was his main? He actually ended up playing um, Martial Law, and then it's like... I noticed he's, um, if he's not playing the, like, the, like, the protag, or, like, you know, the kind of pseudo-protag, he'll play, like, a Bruce Lee kind of style character, you know? Which, you know, fair enough. I used to do that, like I've mentioned before, first time I picked up Street Fighter 2, I just played Fei Long and then was like, oh, okay, I'll try DJ, so... It just shows, given no direction, you'll just pick someone at random and go, oh, I'll try this guy. If you know nothing about them, you'll just pick someone at random. Almost. Oh, he looks cool. Bang. And then you realize, oh, I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> like, you know. After a while, you realize, oh, I can't play this character. I should have just picked Ryu at the beginning. Then I probably would have understood the game much faster. Yeah, starting off the game with a charge character, not a good idea necessarily, unless you could just really adhere to them quickly. And when you can't do any movement in a fighting game like Street Fighter because you didn't understand what a Shoryuken motion was, or a fi even a fireball motion was, because you had nobody to tell you and they just show you a picture of what you're supposed to do with the stick and you're like, huh? Fighting games, man. Fighting games. But yeah, like... Honestly... Haha, <laughs> I got him. Uh, honestly, like, the... Um, before it became a meme, I used to always play Waluigi on, um... Waluigi on, uh... Mario Kart, and everyone used to get mad at me. And then it became a meme, and I was so fucking happy. You don't know how happy I was. I even bought my, uh... I even bought, like, a friend of mine a Waluigi hat. <laughs> I was like, yeah, because he was so fed up with me talking about Waluigi. I was like, Waluigi. Ah, uh, one time we played Mario, Mario Monopoly, and I, I was just losing it at, like, Waluigi stupid... Because you can't play Waluigi on Mario Monopoly. If you've ever played Mario Monopoly, you can't play as Waluigi. So I was playing as like Yoshi and stuff and like uh, Luigi, standard Luigi or Wario or something. And we were making it, because each character has a star power in that game. They all have star powers. 
and uh, you know, like maybe it's like, oh yeah, if you if you have like this property or uh, this much property, and you do this, you'll get like more coins or something. It's like you know, it's different for each character. Like I was saying, ooh, no, the stampers, they're coming to stamp. Um, and yeah, we were making a bullshit. <laughs> like star powers while Luigi would have and we I was just like full on unable to breathe <laughs> cuz it was like what would Waluigi's power be cuz he's so like unpopular oh his star power would be immediately go to jail <laughs> or like star power <laughs> every time you roll a multiple of 2 go to jail <laughs> we were just like making these ridiculous jokes for hours and then like someone got confused because we were swapping characters so much that the next time we played it someone kept moving Mario and I was just like <laughs> crying with laughter and I just go it's a me identity theft and <laughs> we all just start losing it <laughs> and everyone's just like god damn it <laughs> we can't ever play a board game with you because you just make stupid comments like this I was having so much fun. <laughs> There's something really funny about using Mario's voice for like highly sinister things, like let's -a do crime. <laughs> You're just like, oh god, <laughs> like you know. Uh, I was just, uh, it was like a weird time in my life. Pretty much any part of my life, I just realized, any part of my life that you can look at and reflect is like, that was a weird time in my life. <laughs> and it's just like, every part of my life. I'm like, oh, oh, I see. <laughs> I don't think there's been a single part of my life where I've just been like, oh, you know, like, this was actually quite a bland part of my life. Like, every single part that I can remember, I guess that's what makes them memorable, though, right? There's too many fireworks on this. I don't like it. Oh, man. I can't remember. What's this... I think I may, is either I got out of my, so this is going to be a weird way to preface this, I, it was either my first or second proper girlfriend and like, I feel already like I'm going to get a load of shit for what I'm about to say if I don't phrase it really well, like, so, oh, uh, like, I don't, I don't have a lot of major relationships that I would consider like a semi-serious relationship or a relationship that I took seriously because I tend to just be like quite disinterested and more just like, oh, I don't know really like know like how to either maintain or be interested in getting a relationship. But like there was a few situations in like, I, I had like a relationship with some people and one girl was a girl I worked with. Um, and she was like half Cantonese, half Vietnamese. And then I ended up in a relationship like a few years later and that went horribly, that relationship. And then like I ended up in a relationship with another person who was from China. And like uh, that went horribly and it kind of fucked me up for a long period of time. Um, because like I really cared about her and it just, it was, it was a dark time. And, um, <laughs> Yeah. So I'm getting to like something that's not dark. Well, no, this is dark. <laughs> Fuck, why, why am I getting... Oh, this isn't a dark joke. Shut up. No, it, it, me and me and my uh, friend, we went to like a Diwali festival or something and there was like lantern festivals and stuff there and there was a lot of Chinese um, circus... Not Chinese circus, what do they call it? They had the mask guy changes his mask, you know, the Beijing opera masks. 
big change in one. I always love those guys because it's just like I, I love this the changing of the masks. So awesome. I always thought it was cool. And uh, <clears throat> this girl came out, this Chinese gymnast came out, and she was spinning plates. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And my friend said to me afterwards, saying, like, um, you could see that they were taped to her, though. So it was, and I was like, oh, God. And, like, I turned to him, and he was like, oh, fuck, you can't say that. That's too dark. Yeah, I, I said to him, why is it every time I meet a cute Chinese girl, they just lie to me? And he was just like, fuck <laughs> like i feel hurt by that what the fuck and i'm like i'm sorry and i'm like why am i apologizing i'm the one who came out of a terrible relationship recently it wasn't terrible for her fault it was just tragic um because it ended so poorly and we were both very upset about it <laughs> you know like when you make dark humor that's like kind of like really like too on the nose and it's just like car crash <laughs> and they're like man like i feel more emotionally stung by that than you seem to be and it's like yeah i just cover up my sadness with horrible dank humor apparently <laughs> like oh that was a horrible time when did i bring that up <laughs> i'm bringing up all the worst things i come into these things with like decent anecdotes going i'm just going to talk about this this will be nice and wholesome then i go down this dark rabbit hole of the worst things to be talking about What next? Anything else? <laughs> Is this just dark humor channel? Is this just dedicated to like inappropriate and very horribly condemning humor and attacking the Christian churches? <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah, I just like don't like control of any form of organized religion. That isn't just individual. No, I don't even hate that. Like, that's a lie. I don't really care. <laughs> like, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> Can we talk about something? Is there anything in my brain that's not horrific murder of the soul? <laughs> anything? Uh, let's see. Well, Crash Bandicoot's nice, isn't he? And then I pick it apart and ruin it by saying, like, what's wrong with him? It's the same uh, th uh, uh, attitude you can have with Mario, which is the more you put him around people who are, like, his own, like, in-universe people like him, and they're all, like, quite capable people, you realize that him sitting there going, wahoo, and just, let's -a go, and all of this weirdness, you start to realize that, oh my god, what's wrong with Mario? <laughs> like, you know, like, the more you see it, like, especially, like, a lot of people when I was watching, that like, Mario Odyssey playthroughs, and I played through it myself, I was like, you know, you meet Pauline, and she can talk, and Peach can talk, and Luigi can talk, and Mario's just like, wahoo, and you're just like, what is wrong with Mario? It's the same with Crash. Crash is literally exactly the same. How come Sega can do it? Sonic can speak. I'm sure he's not the brightest guy in canon, but he's capable of stringing basic concepts together. He's not just going, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you know, he's actually saying things. Like, boy, I love chili dogs. <laughs> and hey, man, don't kill everyone, Shadow. Maybe we need to talk to them later. <laughs> oh, it's gone dark again. <laughs> Shadow is pure dark. I used to really like Knuckles. I used to really think Knuckles was cool, and everyone was like, no, Knuckles is cool because he's not Tails, and I'm like, fuck off. He's way cooler than Tails. Knuckles is the, the hotness. I want, like, as a kid, I wanted to be Knuckles, and then, like, everyone was like, you, you can't be a echidna that's red <laughs> and only wears shoes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fair. What is Engine wearing? Why is Engine has like, we're gonna go look at this in a minute. Uh fun fact about the crash dance, someone invented it. That was my great fact about the crash dance. 
like someone in marketing just on the fly for the marketing campaign invented it and they had nothing to do with Naughty Dog and then Naughty Dog were like, that's a cool dance, we're just going to put that in everything. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, I keep telling myself that was the last one then I think of other dumb shit to talk about. Um, uh, I do like this. I like these cups. I like the original cups. I play them too much, though. I kind of know them inside out. It's getting boring for me. It's turning my brain into jelly. Uh, honestly, I think I've done them all too much. I'm going to show off some ring rally, I guess. Let's just pick something at random. <laughs> 